Bayou Time Sports is brought to you by Terrible General Health Systems Community Sports Institute in conjunction with Barker Honda. kick off our media session right now with the Dean of Southland Conference Coaches. That would be Tim Rebo entering his ninth season at Nichols. Of course, he won the Southland Conference Championship back in 2018 and 2019, and Coach is ready for more this year. So let's go to Coach Tim Rebo and Thibodeau. How's things going in Thibodeau, <laughs> Coach? Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, as can be expected, it's uh, warm and humid. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be like that now until November, probably. But, uh, Coach, let's talk a little bit. Last year, the Colonels were 3-8 and eight overall, 3-3 three and three in Southland Conference play. And then now this year, you're going to have one of the toughest schedules in FCS. You're going to take on TCU. Then you're going to play the Cotton Bowl champions from Tulane. And then four playoff teams from the FCS. So how do you get your ball club ready for something like that? Man, that's a, that's a schedule. Well, listen, when you look back uh, and we reflect last year, uh, we did do some good things. We did fall short of some expectations and some goals that we put forward. Uh, but we, we were getting better each week uh, as the season went on. Uh, this year, I think it's going to be very, very simple. we got to take care of the Colonels. We have to worry about us. We have to come in and have a really great fall camp and get all the things that you do during that one-month time period to get ready for your games. And, and you can't get too far ahead of yourself. I say it every year. Uh, we have, we're going to have a tough season. We have a tough preseason schedule, but it's going to prepare us for some good conference football games, and we feel like we'll be ready. Let's talk about your quarterback situation because everyone always wants to know about the quarterback. you got Pat McQuaid. He's that quarterback, and you have an offensive line that should be kind of a veteran offensive line. How do you see your team coming out of spring training? Well, I thought we had a good spring training. When you look back overall, the, the, the new additions that we had to the football team, uh, and we had six of eight newcomers that were with us in the spring, uh, that really helped us, and those guys are going to get on the field early for us. But, yeah, everybody wants to look at the quarterback and how he could, you know, what kind of leadership skills he has, how is he, he's going to run the team. Uh, Pat's come in, and we were very fortunate to get him here in January, so he's with us all spring. Uh, he's done a good job. But you guys hit it also. It, it starts up front uh, we got to have some guys that can protect him I don't care you know if you got Patrick Mahomes back there at quarterback you better have somebody up front that's got to protect him coach you got a lot of bodies on that preseason all-conference list as well I want to talk to you about Patrick Butch alluded to it in that offensive line I've always looked at offense as a creative process and defense is destructive and you, know, you can always uh, build something quicker sometimes but in this particular case how is that the room looking right now both on the offensive line at the quarterback position as well how's the continuity offensively well I, I kind of you know I'm a big baseball guy and I kind of look at it from a baseball standpoint too uh, you know you build your team in baseball up the middle you know you have your catchers and your infielders and all the way through center field but kind of the same thing I think you build it from that middle and it starts with our center Evan Russell. Uh, he has done a he's an all-conference player. Uh, he's been a starter for us the last couple of years. He's a leader, uh, and, and I just feel good about where we are with him up front uh, and Pat taking the snaps from him. And then you got Mark Bartholomew, uh, DeAndre Keller, who played a bunch of football games for us. Uh, and, then, and then to go, you know, we have a new coach that's uh, coaching the offensive line who came in the spring for, uh, for us. Uh, P.J. Burkhardt, who's a former All-American player for us here, uh, and he's got that room right. That sounds good, Coach. Again, it's all about the continuity in the offensive line. I, the point I was just making is that usually when it takes a lot longer to create and get those guys together, I always talk about on defense that you can have four or five guys out of position, one guy steps up and make a great play, but offensively, that continuity's got to be there across the board. Just wanted to get a sense of where you are on that, and you just capped it for us. Thanks a lot. We appreciate that. Yeah, Coach, one more thing real quick. You know, we Thanks. talked to the commissioner in the opening segment of the show, and we asked him about the parity in the league. I mean, as a coach, you got to feel like, hey, we always have an opportunity to win a championship if we take care of our business and play the way we're supposed to play. 
Yeah, that's so true. And again, it starts with yourself, and you have to do it. You better have some confidence that you can go in and play with any teams in, in the league. And I think in the past, we've, we've proved that we can do that. Uh, this It's good football. It's good coaching. you got to go on the road to some tough games. Uh, and a little bit uncertainty in the league this year, I think it's gotten stronger and stronger every year, is having four new uh, head coaches uh, across the line of scrimmage from you. It's, it's going to be a little bit different. Let me get you to talk a little bit about and, and take your time and tell us a little bit about where you guys are going offensively, where you're going defensive, defensively, and how much improvement did you see in your team coming out of that spring training? Yeah, I think when you start off on the offensive side of the ball, you better all be on the same page. And uh, we're going to do what we've done in the past. I mean, I don't think there's any secret. I, I think the game is really simple when you get down to it. You've got to be able to block and you got to be able to run the football. And then when you do that, then you're going to allow some of the guys uh, to make some explosive plays and, and let your playmakers uh, t take the game over if they can do that. But, you know, you're not going to always hit that home run every time you go up, up to the plate. So you got to be able to take some singles and some doubles, and then you got to be ready when that when you get that chance. You know, we, we talk offensively a lot of times. Uh, you got to take what the defense is going to give you, and you got to make some layups. And we want to make a bunch of layups, and then we'll start hitting those three pointers and those game winners at the end. Uh, defensively, I like where we are coming out of spring. I think we added. Uh, some, some new players to the position. We, we had a bunch of guys returning. We had 10 starters returning from last year, uh, and we added a couple of new players to that position who can really run, uh, can get after the quarterback and make some plays. So I feel good about where we are defensively. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. Mighty Time Sports is brought to you by Terrible General Health Systems Community Sports Institute in conjunction with Barker Honda. your personal approach to how you manage them? Eli Ennis comes to mind, a guy that has success early, then you come back, then is there something that you're looking for in terms of his management of that success? Not everybody runs well with a full cup of success. What's your approach, your approach to managing those kind of players? Yeah, I think you got to keep everybody grounded. You know, you really have to. You, you, you get re you, you can get humbled in this game really quick, and we try to talk to the players about that is, hey, you can have a big play and you can have success and uh, the, the next play is going to find you and it might not go as well. So we talk about that, uh, uh, being humble and appreciated and, know, and knowing that this great game, and it's not all about you. Uh, you can get all those accolades you want at the end of the year, and the more the team wins, the more success you're going to have individually. Mm, fair enough. Man, we're watching your defensive squad here. We're <laughs> looking at some after, highlights, man. and they are definitely getting after it. Can you point out some of your standouts on the defensive side of the football? Yeah, you know, I, I, when I look back at the 10 starters that guys uh, on and off last year, and, and then you go back, uh, we had three starters last year that didn't even play for us, uh, who had played significant starters the year before that. So I really feel good about that. Coach Tommy Rybeck, he does a great job on the defense. Uh, he allows our guys some freedom. They, they can, uh, they discipline, they can run. Uh, and, and they really love to tackle and they love to get after you a little bit. So we, we last year were playing all those guys, feels like got a lot of experienced guys that you know, had to play in certain situations, and they're going to only be better this year with, with those games under their belt. Coach, this is year nine for you, and, and I'm just curious, if you go back on the other side of the ball, does Tommy, I, I notice your players don't on the defensive side obviously don't have names on the back of their jerseys. Is that part of the psychological approach to the game to keep everybody grounded? Is that a Tommy thing or is that you? No, 
know, I think I, that's just old school stuff. You know, we don't like to do that. It's more of a team. You know, the old cliche about the name on the front of the shirt is more important than on the back. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the Colonels, we're Nichols, and we're hungry. We're going to fight together as a team, and that's just what we do. Can you tell us a little bit about Eli Ennis? Because last year he was the SLC Freshman of the Year, and he's coming back again this year. And I know big things is, are expected from that young man. Yeah, freshman of the year. You know, he went to a small high school, Ohatchee, uh, in North Alabama, and uh, he did everything for him. He was their quarterback. He was their defensive back. He kicked off. He punted. He kicked, he never came off the field. Wow. So, you know, we knew he was a good athlete, uh, and then we, we had to find a spot for him on the field, and I think our defensive staff did a good job. They put him in good position to have some success and make plays, but he's one of those kids that I, I tell you, he's humbled. Uh, he, he walks around with a smile on his face the whole time, uh, but when you put that helmet on, he likes to get after you. <laughs> Coach, I mentioned at the top of the segment that you're the dean of the Southland Conference, nine years. You've been very uh -huh. successful over there. Um, does that even put any pressure on you at this point when you've had so much success and you've been around that long? No, I, I don't think so. You know, I, I was thinking about that my ninth yeah. media day uh, going through here. I've seen some coaches uh, come and go, but it's, it's not about me. It, it's about this community. Uh, it's about this this university, Dr. Clune, Jonathan Terrell, my athletic director. It's all the guys uh, putting it all together, and I, I surround myself with good people. And, and the staff that I have, uh, majority has been with us all nine years. It's all about them. Uh, I have the easy job. I get to sit up here and talk to you guys and answer these questions. They got to do all the hard work. Coach, we know it's not that easy. Believe me. We talk about the inner game, Butch and I do all the time. And I'm curious. In the nine years, you you pre-COVID gone through COVID and now on the back side of it. Give us a thumbnail sketch of what were some of the significant changes in terms of how you have to approach the game. There are some obvious to be sure, but how has it changed you and how have you seen the game change? Give us a snapshot. Well, I thought we had things rolling uh, before COVID. We, we really did. And, and no excuse, whatever. Some people handled it different than, uh, and maybe we didn't handle it as well. But we, we haven't been the same since then. You know, mm. our off-season program took a little bit of a hit and how we did some things. And then, of course, we had some players who moved on and graduated. But I, I got some guys who are here with me today, like David Robinson and George yeah. Jackson, uh, some guys who represent our program, who've done an outstanding job, who knows what it takes to be successful and knows we want to get back to that. So I think we're back on the right track. Uh, we, we have seen some changes. Our off-season program is better. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, I'm telling you, over 90% of our team here all summer working out. And you know the more guys you have here in the summer, the better off you should be. Uh, and I think our guys are hungry, and, and they're ready to get after, and they want to get back. Look, we, we had a little success, and we, we built this new building. We improved mm -hmm. our facilities. Uh, that's not the most important thing. It's the things you got to do on the field, and I think we're really, re really ready to get back to that. Coach, we're going to hear from David and Jordan in just a second, but uh, I want to get you to talk about these guys and tell us exactly what they mean to your program. Well, you start off, we want guys, yeah, everybody talks about the culture and what you want. Uh, and these two guys right here are truly ambassadors uh, for our program and, and the entire community. Uh, the guys from right here around the area, David went to Central Lafourche High School, uh, Jordan went to, to Dutchtown. Uh, both classy character guys, uh, what you want representing your program, representing all the players. You know, just all around, they're just good people. And, and anytime you ask them to do anything, they're out front leading the way to do it. And that's how you can be successful. Mm -hmm. And one final quick thing, Coach. Uh, we were just looking at the preseason poll, and of course it had Southeastern on top. UIW came in next. Uh, just do you ever even pay any attention to that <laughs> at all? You know, it's funny when you, when you talk about that because coaches are always, you talk about uh, psychologists, right? We're always trying to be psychologists. I remember when we first got here, uh, we, we were picked at last, and, and yeah. rightfully so. And, you know, you use that, a little chip on your shoulder, and then the next year you kind of picked along the middle of the pack, and you go, okay. And then all of a sudden when you pick to win it, you have the, the big mark on your back. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Carabon General Health Systems, Modern Technology, and Timeless Caring. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. 
Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. Mighty Time Sports is brought to you by Terrible General Health Systems Community Sports Institute in conjunction with Barker Honda. We have David Robinson Jr. joining us now. He's our wide receiver. Had 10 receptions last year for 159 yards. Also had a 67-yard touchdown versus the Lamar Cardinals yeah. last year. So he's a wide receiver who can get it done. David, are you there? Yes, sir. There he is. How are you doing this morning, David? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> We're doing good. As I mentioned, you had 10 receptions last year for 159 yards. Just how much more confidence do you have in your game coming into the season this year? Um, this year we've been building a, another, fuck, another year we got a new quarterback, Pat, coming in. Uh, he came in leading the team. As a senior, we go out there often. We work out on weekends. We catching jugs. Everything we're doing, we're building on it. And we're just preparing for this year, we're really excited about it. How motivated were you guys as you go into spring training? You know, you had some holes to fill, so you go out there, you could see what some of the young guys were doing. Just give me some of your impressions of how it went during the spring. Uh, I think the spring went well. Uh, I know we keep saying we have young guys, but those young guys had to really step it up last year as we had so many gaps filled, to be filled in week in and week out just from injuries and other situations where we just had them filling the position and I think they did a really good job so coming in the spring all they did with freshmen they had that experience so they were they were just more they were also leaders on the team so they knew how to get it done they've been in the situation they know what it takes to play on Saturdays David we hear it at nauseum we know that this is a team game but I'm curious when you've got a new signal caller in there continuity is going to be important and then how do you work with him on the nuances of your game and then do you guys talk about how you can improve one another and then disearn exactly what your body type is in terms of how you like to come out of breaks and to develop the level of chemistry that's needed to have the kind of success that you need and you want and expect I'm sorry, I couldn't really hear you too good just now. Yeah, just the idea of what does it take to get the connectivity going between your quarterback. You've got a new signal caller. Uh, do you guys spend extra time discerning what your body type is and how you're coming out of breaks, communicating? Give us some sense of what's required to get that connectivity. Uh, just extra work, extra rep, repetition. You got to get out there and, and be with him on a daily basis. I mean, he'll... We'll call and do team meetings, just offensively quarterback and receivers, and we're together. We're on the field, watching film. We're on the board. We talk about it. We talk about our hand signals. It's just the amount of times you do it. You can never do it enough. It got to be repeated until the point where it's second nature and you're not thinking about anything, and we just know what one another is going to do. What about the running game this year? Do you see the offense becoming more balanced? Uh, I'm just interested to know what you think about it after going through spring training. Or where, where do you see the offense? Will it be more of a passing attack? Will it be more balanced? What do you think? I think it will always be that balanced offense. Uh, our line's up front, pretty solid with veteran O-line. And I think our running back groups, well, <laughs> a lot of depth in that room. I mean, we got a lot of guys. and. Oh, why? Like I said, we got, we got, I'm the old guy in the room now, and we got all the young guys that got that experience last year, so we got the depth there. Okay, let's find out about the Colonels from a defensive standpoint, and for that, we will bring in Jordan Jackson. He's a cornerback who had 36 tackles last year for the Colonels, but maybe more importantly, you broke up eight or nine passes. Jordan, thank you for joining us this morning, man. How are you doing? Man, thank y'all for having me. I'm doing great. It's um, a good morning over here. I hope y'all are doing well. We're doing well. We're hot just like you, man. It's hot <laughs> everywhere in the South right now. Uh, tell me a little bit about your team. After going through spring training, everybody goes through spring training. You got a lot of holes to fill. What did you see on the defensive side? What were you happy about? And what do you think the team needs to improve in? 
Most importantly, I'm happy about our defense returning a lot of people. We have a lot of people returning, so they have a lot of playing experience. Along with that playing experience comes confidence. So when you have that confidence ready with you, you're able to play fast, run fast, hit hard, play hard, and I feel like that's what we need totally as a defense. Now, of course, last year, you, like you said, the defense made a lot of strides for you, and you're expecting more things to come this year. But what about you yourself? Did you go into spring training with any goals, what you wanted to do to try to improve your game? Um, I feel like every college player should set some goals before every single season. Um, even going into college, you just set goals for yourself of what you would like to reach, what you want to achieve, what you think should happen, and that should allow you to prevail through anything you cross and be as strong as you want to. Jordan, you mentioned that the confidence comes from demonstrated ability. I'm curious, as a defensive back, what do you do to bolster your confidence when in you're in a league where there's so much new quarterback play? And sometimes film will give you some indicators that you can look for, but since the bodies are new under center, give me some sense how you're mitigating that. Um, as, a DB, as a DB, confidence is always key. You have to pick up on certain tendencies from receivers, certain tendencies on quarterbacks, how they, how they go pre-snap, um, their foot, how they align. QBs look certain ways sometimes. You got to pick up on most of those things as a DB to stay confident and be able to play fast. Mm. And I imagine that just gets ratcheted up when you're dealing with quarterbacks that are, are either new because you don't see them uh, because they're new or they're good at disguising things. I mean, and when you're playing fast and tempo, does that challenge you even more? This is a league that was wide open. It loses a lot of offensive talent this year. But the bottom line is I still think they're going to try to push the ball up the field vertically as a, a general theme throughout the conference. Um, yes, overall, having a tempo offense definitely puts pressure on the defense. Um, DBs as well, because you might get a go ball, and then 10 seconds later, you got to come run back, hurry up, and get another one back to back. So being a DB, having fast, up tempo offenses is a, is, is a hard thing to deal with. But